Hello everyone, this is DA from e Academy, and today we are going to see what is a Cauchy Shores inequality and how we can prove this in functional analysis or in inner product space. So let's start with the statement of Cauchy Shores inequality. So for any two elements in an inner product space V, so the magnitude of the inner product of the two elements x and y from the inner product space is less than or equal to the magnitude or we can say that the norm of x times the norm of y. So we will prove this now. So the very first case when proving this inequality is that by taking the two elements from the inner product space, the two elements can be zero. So the very first case in this proof is that if x and y, the two elements from the inner product space are zero vectors, so we have the inner product of the zero and that equals to zero because zero inner product with zero it gives us zero and the magnitude of zero is zero and the norm of zero is also zero. So zero times zero we get zero so this is less than or equal to zero so this so this inequality holds trivially so we can suppose that at least one of x and y from one of x and y must at least be non zero in order to prove this because if both of them are zero then this inequality is trivially true so we can suppose that both of x and y are not zero at least one of them is non zero. So the case two here. So if y is not equal to zero and x and y are the two elements of the inner product space and we have a field element lambda so we can write. So we're now going to compute this and by definition this thing is greater than or equal to zero. And we can write this as x inner product with x. So we have this factor plus lambda y with x we get this and then x with the lambda y plus and now lambda y with the lambda y. This can be factored out so we can write y and x and for x plus lambda y this is now the thing that was uh, briefly discussed in the previous video about the properties of the inner product space. So we can write in place of this, this equals to this thing by the third or the fourth property of the definition of the inner product space and we can also write this that lambda y conjugate by the conjugate property of, of the complex numbers. So lambda can be extracted out and this can be written as as a whole conjugate so y and x whole conjugate and this thing is lambda x and y so this is the thing that we are going to place in this thing so x plus lambda y equals to lambda conjugate with x and y the inner product of this thing and the same case will be for extracting this lambda out because we can't extract this lambda out easily and we can extract this lambda out by doing this thing. First we extract this lambda out and doing this thing on this inner product. So we can write for this we have x and x. For lambda y and x we have this. For this we have so now we have this thing. So we can name the elements this as a and x and x and y is b and y and y is c just to simplify this so let this x and x in a product with x and x is a with x and y is b and with y and y is c so now we can write a plus lambda b i'm writing this first lambda conjugate b plus Lambda. So this is y and x, so we can write b conjugate here plus lambda and lambda conjugate with the c. 
so now we have this thing and by definition this thing is greater than or equal to zero and we have supposed that y is not equal to zero and this is why this is not equal to zero so this thing this thing implies that the c is the element that is not equal to zero so we can assume the value of lambda equals to minus b times c over c so this is just our assumption just put the value of lambda equals to minus b over c why because c can't be equal to zero so that is why we are we are assuming the value of the lambda the field element as minus b over c so now we have to put this value of lambda in this in this inequality so we have this inequality that we have put the value of the lambda is minus b over c in this inequality so lambda conjugate is minus b over c conjugate in times b plus lambda minus b y c with the b conjugate plus lambda into lambda conjugate into c so now we are going to manipulate this and we can write this as a minus b over c bar again minus b with the b conjugate over c and this is negative and negative positive so b times b conjugate over c times c conjugate c so as c was equal to y and the c bar is also equal to y this word that in about y and y so this thing implies that c conjugate equals to c so we can replace c conjugate by c in in this inequality so putting this and putting b and b conjugate equals to this thing by definition of the conjugacy with the element of the b so this c cancel out with this c and this c conjugate is replaced by this c and here this c is replaced by this c so now what is this that this element is cancelled out with this and we have only a minus this element and we know that this is greater than or equal to zero and this is also greater than or equal to zero so we can assume that uh, if we multiply c with all of this we can get a c minus this thing greater than or equal to zero or we can extract that this square is greater than or equal to a c so this is the value and this is the value uh, that we can use now that what was b b was x and y and magnitude square that is greater than or equal to what is a x and x and what is c that is y and y so and we can write this as norm of x and norm of y and this is this thing so this is what we have to prove and this is what the cauchy shores inequality is and this is proved by assuming that y is not equal to zero and now and now we can assume that y equals is, is, is equal to zero and we can see that what gonna happen if y equals to zero then c must also equal to zero so if c equals to zero if y if y equals to zero then this thing implies that c equals to zero and if c equals to zero then we can assume that that norm of y equals to zero and if y equals to zero, then this thing directly implies that the product of x and y is equal to zero so this zero with the zero and then whatever the x is this thing is also equal to zero so the whole the relation must holds in this case as well so in the case one we have seen that if both of the x and y is zero then the inequality trivially holds and in the case two we have seen that if y is non-zero then this is the thing that we have to do in order to prove the cauchy shores inequality and in the end we have also seen that if y equals to zero so the relation is also true so this is for now and if you're looking for more such videos then you can subscribe this channel in order to watch more upcoming videos we will meet in the next video till then take care goodbye